So I've started rebuilding a few machines for a workshop I'm working on, and I thought I'd document the process of building, rebuilding this old uh, Atlas drill press here. This is an Atlas Model 73. I got it off Craigslist a few weeks ago, and uh, I'm going to make it uh, pretty much as good as new, hopefully. So we're going to see how that goes, and uh, I'll kind of document the process along the way. So here's some close-ups for the drill press. This is a, uh, it's in a little kind of rough shape. It's uh, kind of old and rusty and crusty, and it seems to be mostly there. It seems to be mostly in a functional state, but uh, I plan on doing a full restoration on it, make it really nice and pretty, and put it in the workshop, uh, good as new, basically. Um, so this is exactly how I got it off Craigslist. Uh, the guy that I bought it from, he planned to do some work with it. He was going to do uh, a lot of metal work, he said, and he wanted to gear it down real low to cut metal. Um, I plan on using it the same way, uh, so we'll have to work on some pulley situations, but this is basically the situation it's in. Real kind of nasty uh, electrical stuff going on. I'm not sure why you would put a switch down this far on a machine like this. Gonna replace all the electrical with it. So this is the big box of parts that uh, the guy gave with the machine. He had already taken the motor off because the, mo the mounts are really bad. So I have to work on figuring out the mounts. And we've got the pulley for the motor. We've got the mounting bracket for the motor. The bad motor mounts. And then uh, he was going to put in a, a counter pulley to make it go down even slower speeds. Um, so he got this aftermarket pulley. And I'm going to try to fit it on that machine. He had... His idea was to get this aftermarket uh, little swing arm to use with it, um, but I'm actually going to try to use one that's already on the machine. And just the more brackets for it. So as you can see, there there is an original counter pulley bearing on here. Um, the original pulley itself is gone, uh, and this one does not mate up to that, but hopefully if I just replace the bearing inside uh, with one that's more appropriate for for running on this uh, bearing surface, then uh, that should hopefully work. And I think it should be a pretty good system. Otherwise, if not, uh, it's not really a big deal to me right now, so I'll just, uh, I'll just run it straight. So the motor on this mounts back here and then you would adjust it using these screws here to tighten and loosen the belt. And of course, as with any drill press, the motor just runs a V-belt over into the spindle. So. so I'll show you some of the features of this particular drill press. Uh, one of the things that I really like about this is that the chuck isn't permanently mounted. It's actually got a number two Morse taper, so I can uh, run really large number two Morse taper drill bits with this drill press without chucking them up. So that'd be nice for uh, any sort of large holes I have to draw, drill in the future. Um, a couple of nice things, it has a, has a quill lock, which, uh, which is pretty good. Um, of course, it has an adjustable depth stop. And uh, it also has a um, way of adjusting the tension for the quill itself. It's got an original uh, Jacob's chuck in it, an actual Jacob's chuck, uh, which is great, and it actually has the original chuck key for it, which is great. Um, my current drill press I use doesn't even have a proper chuck key, and that's just a miserable thing to deal with, so this is going to be really, really nice to upgrade to a really good working chuck on a real good uh, drill press. Now the one thing I don't really like about this drill press is that it doesn't have a crank for the height to adjust uh, the bed here. Uh, in fact, it's actually kind of frozen in place, so I'll have to deal with that 
a little later. Uh, I would have loved to have a crank to crank this up and down, but uh, hopefully after I polish the shaft, it shouldn't be that bad to work with. So, One tool I'm glad that was included with this is this nice little uh, number two Morse extractor. And uh, I mean, you could, use, you could use like a wedge to drive this out, but it's nice just to have a little hand tool to bring that down through there. So I'm glad that it came with it. That's a nice little part. So just to give you an idea of the caliber of restoration I intend on doing on this drill press, this is uh, another machine I just finished rebuilding uh, earlier this week. This is a really nice old Delta Rockwell strip sander. Uh, I got this from Lost Creek Machine up in uh, central Illinois, or northern Illinois, I believe. Um, and this one was in pretty rough shape when I got it. Uh, I'll probably add some pictures of what it looked like when I first got it, but real rough shape. The, um, the main drive wheel was completely cracked. I had to order a new wheel here. I ordered another, uh, another one of the wheels uh, just because it was in really bad shape. Um, sandblasted every single part of it, uh, primed and painted, uh, real good, uh, good quality enamel paint. Um, all new electrical, new plug, new grounded plug, uh, new switch. I like using this um, steel uh, cord protecting cable, uh, the interconnections and stuff like that. Uh, so the previous person that worked on this particular machine, they lost pretty much all of the original hardware. Probably like about half or less was still there. And um, what was there was kind of old and rusty and uh, I really want to put most of it back into place, uh, especially it was all mismatched. It was all different stuff. Some of them were uh, like cap screws and mismatched bolts of different sizes, and uh, I just couldn't really tolerate that. So uh, I bought all new stainless steel nuts and uh, bolts and washers and all that, and um, got some more appropriate uh, bolts, little screw bolts here with uh, little Phillips heads on them. Uh, these were all just hex caps that were hanging out and just being awful and protruding and I just want to make everything look more original and uh, just look real good in general. Uh, so I plan on making this drill press mostly the same. Um, you know, a really good quality restoration, uh, completely taken apart, sandblasted, painted. Um, I'm not going to be like a museum quality restoration, but I want it to be a real nice uh, addition to my shop and basically be brand new. So yeah, this uh, this strip sander, it's from the 50s, but, you know, it should pretty much looks brand new now, so. But that's about the quality of work I'm hoping to put on this drill press over here. So I'm going to actually begin working on the restoration of this drill press. Um, the first thing I want to do is check out the motor electrically and make sure it actually works. Uh, I've not plugged this in and tested it yet, so it's definitely time for that. Um, I know that I'm going to have to replace the motor mounts here. They're completely rotten, um, and there'd just be no way to get these to work originally with the original parts. So uh, I don't have to go on a, and have to sort of start finding these somewhere. Um, unfortunately, I can't find the... It is a GE motor, but I can't find the model number. I can find some of the... Uh, a lot of the information on the motor itself but it's severely degraded. So I can tell uh, what the phase is, what the voltage is, the horsepower, all that. Um, but everything else is kind of missing from this and I can just barely make that out. Um, so yeah, the first thing I'm gonna do is just test it electrically. Um, it looks like it is missing the caps that cover up the oiling holes. Um, I'll have to make some of those in the lathe probably. Uh, just gonna make that nice. But yeah, I'll go ahead and test this out electrically. Okay, so I've got the motor all hooked up to my Variac. These are uh, great things to use when you're just testing something out, you're not sure if it works. Because if there's a short, uh, you can detect it without blowing the breaker or causing more damage to something. So I like to use a Variac whenever I, I'm trying out something for the first time. So let's just give this a little bit of power and see what it does. Oh yeah, this is working really nicely. The 
even at, even at 30 volts it uh gets going enough to turn the clutch off so let's go ahead and go up to full voltage here yep so this motor is working really nicely um, nice and smooth nice and quiet I'm sure it's wearing its full potential there so that's just great taking about 5 amps, which is about what the motor says. I think it says 4.5 amps. So, yep, everything's good on this motor, so it's definitely worth working on and fixing up.